And the trial of Andre McDonald is expected to start on Monday, but that's not stopping his team from trying to get evidence thrown out. Plus, a potentially big decision on the horizon for Harlandale ISD, how teachers could get a four-day school week coming up on your 9 at 9. And over on KSET.com, we have a sweepstakes going on for our KSET insiders. A few lucky winners will get to ride with David Sears and Ursula Perry on a carriage ride for part of the Western Heritage Parade. We're going to hear from David, who's live in Blanco, with more about the contest and how you can enter. Live from KSET 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And we start this morning with something you may have seen on Transguide this morning, an active Amber Alert from the Dallas area. McKinney police looking for six-year-old Jennifer and nine-year-old Jessica Burns. Both have blonde hair and blue eyes and wear glasses. Police say they're also looking for six-year-old Jamie Burns in connection with the disappearance. She's about 5'2 and is driving a black vehicle with unknown license plates. If you know anything that can help police find them, you're asked to call McKinney Police at 972-547-2700. And a good morning to you. It is Friday. It is January 20th. Thanks for joining us, and we do have an update on that silver alert. That's this morning involving a missing woman near Houston. The Texas Department of Public Safety now says 88-year-old Marilyn Jerome has been found. Now, she disappeared yesterday afternoon in the town of Spring. We reported the silver alert earlier on GMSA, but it has been canceled. We just wanted to get you updated on both of those stories. Let's go outside with live cam. I haven't been outside in a while. Let's take a sneak peek and see how things are looking. Lots of clouds around. That tends to lead to some cooler temperatures hovering around 56. Here's Justin. Yeah, that's right, Mark. It's not going to warm up all that much today just because we have that blanket over top of us, that cloud deck. Temperatures may get up to around 60 or so, and that's it. We're also watching the radar pretty closely because we do have a few showers here and there. These are all very light. Keep in mind, it's very dry at the surface where we are, so a lot of this is evaporating before it hits the ground, but conceivably a few sprinkles, some light showers there across our eastern counties, not in San Antonio. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit closer here on the, the rain. You can see it's working its way towards Shiner. Eventually, Howitzville, you could see a few very light showers this morning. Won't add up to much, but we're always thankful to see at least a little bit of rain on the radar. KSAT 12 hour forecast. Clouds all day long. Noontime 57. Again, we're up around 60 or so for a high. We'll keep it at a 10% chance of a light shower or two. A little better opportunity for some rain as we get into tonight and early tomorrow. Pollen count is in. Good news here, mountain cedar drops, mold drops. Mountain cedars in the moderate category, molds are low. Love to see that. Rain chances ahead. Small rain chance coming up on Saturday, as we mentioned tomorrow morning. And then another opportunity, in fact, looking better and better for some rain coming in Monday night into Tuesday morning. More on that in just a bit. Let's get over to Stephen now with a check of your Friday morning traffic. Thanks, Justin. Uh, well, things aren't looking too great out here along 10 at ProBamp, but let's get a closer look and show you what is taking place right now. You see those flashing lights off uh, what appears to be the shoulder lane there. We do have a crash that was reported, and you can see at least one lane of traffic is being impacted at this hour. Uh, traffic is moving pretty slow through that area, so let's see how that looks on the map. Thankfully, no red is building up. It's been pinpointed in the westbound lanes of I-10 right near ProBamp, but it looks like a lot of folks have already arrived to their just destination just on time, but uh, again, just seeing a few active road closures that are out there right now, so just be on the lookout for that. But let's get it back here and get you on a rotation because while it is green uh, there on the map, let's see where else San Antonio looks like in our surrounding areas. Roads are quiet there at 35 at Widnear, both north and southbound lanes. Not too bad, but a lot of folks again have already arrived to their destination, so the roads look pretty quiet. Back to normal for now, but we'll keep a close eye on things throughout the morning. But other than that, we're all ready to drive off into the weekend. All right. Thank you very much, Stephen. There's a lot going on today from the White House, the airport, and across the Alamo City. We have you covered in today's 9 at 9. Hi, Andre McDonald is expected to start Monday, but his legal team is still trying to get evidence thrown out. The Air Force Major is accused of killing his wife in 2019. His defense team brought up multiple searches of the home, and in one case argued investigators went into the McDonald home without a warrant. Today, the defense says it plans to show why other pieces of evidence should be dismissed. A judge will make the final call. Harlandale ISD teachers might be getting three-day weekends if the community agrees to a big change next school year. The district sent out a survey to parents and teachers this week asking about a four-day school week. 
The survey proposes that teachers have Mondays off to reset, take care of family matters. The move is meant to retain teachers in a time when many are leaving the profession because they feel overworked. The district is also looking into after school childcare. The clock is ticking on 54 construction projects across San Antonio and city leaders say 89% of them are on time. Right now, after months of delays, the St. Mary's Strip is set to open in March, but that could be too late for nearby businesses. The city council is expected to address its ordinance on responsible bidders next week, and the move could give the city more say on which contractors are selected for future projects. The 50th annual March for Life rally is happening in Washington, D.C. later today. It's the first time the anti-abortion rally has taken place since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, which took away the constitutional right to abortion. Sunday marks the 50th anniversary of the Roe v. Wade ruling in 1973. President Biden says he has no regrets over classified documents found in his private home and office. He says investigations into these documents will find they were filed in the wrong place. The White House says they'll cooperate while Republicans vow to look into the administration's transparency. They want to know why the discovery of classified documents in November was not made public until January after the midterm elections. The FAA is blaming deleted computer files for the meltdown that grounded air traffic nationwide last week. Federal aviation officials say they were relieved to find the cause was human error and not a cyber attack. The agency says it's taken steps to make their systems more resilient. Boeing has been ordered to appear in a Texas federal court next week. The aerospace company is set to be arraigned on a fraud charge involving the certification of the 737 MAX jet. The case is connected to a 2019 crash that killed 157 people. Families of the victims or their attorneys are allowed to speak at the hearing. A state representative in the Texas House is trying to abolish Confederate Heroes Day. Thursday marked the birthday of Confederate General Robert E. Lee and honors Confederate President Jefferson Davis. State lawmakers have been introducing bills to end the holiday since 2015, but none became law so far. Legendary singer and songwriter David Crosby has died. His family says the 81-year-old died Thursday after a long illness. Crosby was an iconic figure in folk rock music for more than six decades. He was a founding member of two memorable groups, The Birds and Crosby, Stills and Nash. Grammy Award winner and Rock and Roll Hall of Famer churned out classic hits such as Mr. Tambourine Man and Turn, Turn, Turn when he was with The Birds. And that's today's Nine at Nine. We are gearing up for the Western Heritage Parade, and there's an exciting opportunity for our KSAT insiders. If you are an insider, you have a chance to ride in the insider carriage with our David Sears and Ursula Perry. Our David Sears is live in Blanco at the Buggy Barn to tell us more. And David, are you having a good time out there? We have gone back in time. This is like the 1880s. You know the show Yellowstone and 18, what is it, 18? 83. 83, and then there's 19. We, we are back in time here north of Blanca. We're with Dennis Moore, who's the owner of the Buggy Barn. He's got the wagon that Ursula and I are going to be in with some of the folks who are KSAT insiders. We'll talk about that in just a second. But, but first, let's just talk about the authenticity of this and what it feels like to go down the streets of San Antonio in a wagon that comes from the old days it's it's a great feeling we're honored to be a part of the cattle drive uh, parade we've done it for about eight years now and uh just to keep history alive you know and just see the reaction on people's faces and to drive down in front of the alamo and think about what it would have been like 150 years ago you know that's what i say what's it like to try to keep history alive for all these people that are growing up now that really don't know that much about about the western days here in south it's, texas it's an honor to preserve this history we have over 200 buggies wagons here in the museum plus the old west town and our goal is to preserve history and educate people of the way tell me about these two horses now they're going to be pulling this wagon Correct. in that in that parade tell me about it uh, this is tina and trina I bought them when they were two and three in Oles, Olean's, Indiana, for some Amish people. And one of them is actually famous, right? One well, of them, both of them have been in 1883 and Killers wow. of the Flyer Moon. And you've been in 1883 as well? Correct, yes. And correct. your daughter's been in 1883? Right. We just got a whole family of, of movie stars right <laughs> here. And we'll tell you exactly how you can join Ursula and Dennis 
on the wagon. He's going to be pulling the wagon, or not pulling, he's going to be driving the wagon. These guys are going to be pulling the wagon. These, these ladies here will take us, and they'll be really good on that day. Yes, right? they will. Smooth. Guaranteed. No problems? No problems. Looking forward to it. So we'll tell you, coming up in the next half hour, how you can join us right here in this authentic wagon. Ooh, shake it off. We'll be back. <laughs> that worked out. Yeah. It's a perfect timing. Yeah. Right now, 908, 56 degrees on your Friday morning. And here's Tiffany What Does with what's coming up next on GMSA at night. Good morning. It smells delicious here at Jefferson High School. Just check it out. Students are testing their barbecue skills, how they have been preparing for San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Competition next. This morning, local students are getting ready to show off their recipes, techniques, and more importantly, their barbecue. Tiffany Huetas joins us live from Jefferson High School with students who will be competing at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo's Junior Pitmaster Challenge next weekend. Tiffany. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. It is rodeo season here, and this is the perfect weather for barbecue. And how we call it, Stacy, this is the fragrance from Jefferson High School, right? That's right. This is a Jefferson exclusive rodeo fragrance we're producing here. Limited time. <laughs> Limited time. Talk to us about this competition. What is it all about? Oh man, this competition, it just encapsulates everything that we want our kids to really fully enjoy. And it is the communication, it is the camaraderie, but it's that competition, it's that, that, that modifying and adjusting everything just as quickly as you can in order to make the best product possible because you get one bite with the judges. Tell us about what are the students cooking? Ooh, so for today, we're cooking a little bit of chicken. So if you, over here, we've, uh, it's almost done. But this is what we do. Uh, we've got some great uh, poultry chefs here. That they're going to they're gonna run with it next weekend at the rodeo. And what techniques are the judges looking for? Okay, so usually the judges are looking for the type of, they, the first thing they do is they get to look at it. So they're, they're looking at the appearance. They're looking, what does it look like? Does it look great? And they look like they like shiny chicken kind of thing. But then they want the taste. How does it taste? And then the texture. They don't want it too rubbery. Obviously, chicken is very, very particular. So those are the things that the judges look for. And you all have secret ingredients, I, I assume. Oh, you assume correctly. <laughs> we absolutely have secret ingredients. Again, Jefferson exclusive. <laughs> Jefferson uh, exclusive. Awesome. And we have two students here with us. We have Star and Megan. Tell us about what you both have learned during this process. Um, I've been exposed to different cultures, and I've, um, I've also learned how to cook different a variety of meats and um, I'm just really excited on what I've learned and how I could use it in the future. And Star, you were talking about this hits close to home. Yeah, uh, so my family like enjoys barbecuing a lot so I uh, decided I should like seek out something similar in our organization around the school uh, and get more involved with what my parents love to do and you know uh, grow a connection with them and this whole thing has also helped me develop a uh, family here. And uh, this whole team, you know, makes me feel safe. Uh, and I love, I really love my mentors as well. And that you can smell, you can smell <laughs> all of it. I don't know if y'all can smell it back at the station, but give us one last look at this oh. delicious chicken. Yes. Yes, come on, get in there. We haven't even started the, I mean, right now she's naked. We're gonna dress her up. She's going to be beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're so excited for the rodeo. As you can tell, they've been working very hard. We're going to hear more from them coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you. Hi, right, Tiffany. Thank you. That's all. That's a win-win. You know Man. why? Yes. Because you get to eat the homework. Yes. When that's you're done amazing. with your assignment, you get to eat what you smoke or cook. Yes, and uh, I'm sure it's fun learning. They've got a pretty good pit out there, too, because a lot of the ones you buy at the store, the thermometer on the pit is way up high, and you don't get a good reading up there. I mean, uh -huh. you want it down close to where the grade is, huh. where your product is. So they've got one that's got a thermometer down lower, and that's going to give them a more accurate read. That's good. Good, good observation. Good information there right go. there. There you go. You almost gotcha. smell it. Almost. Almost. T well, Tiffany's got a better <laughs> vantage point. Yes, she does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, she does. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the radar, guys. So I want to show you what's going on out there. If, if you're going to be out and about today, you may have to dodge a sprinkler, too. I, it's not going to be a big deal at all, really. This is all going to be very, very light. Uh, but we are detecting a few 
uh, returns on radar. Some showers there south of Gonzales working up towards the Shiner area. And if we've noticed just a few very light returns starting to show up on the southeast side of San Antonio, probably not reaching the ground. I'll show you why here in just a second. We've got a pretty dry layer where we are here at the surface. But some of this heavier stuff off to the east where you see some of the yellow colors, yeah, that could result in a few very light showers. And this is working there. These showers are working their way up towards Howitzville and affecting Shiner as we speak. Uh, as we look at the dew points, and this is why a lot of this is not reaching the ground. It's still pretty dry at the surface. We've got dew points in 20s and 30s. That, uh, that just doesn't allow a lot of that rain to make it to the ground. Now, things will change a little bit as we get into tomorrow morning as uh, these dew points come up at least a little bit. And as we go outside for you right now, there are the gray skies. We're going to see those most of today. 56 degrees, dew point of 30, east northeasterly winds at about 7. And we can see all the cloud cover here across our area. So we've got a deck of low clouds and then some high clouds over top of that. We don't think these clouds will break up much. Can't completely rule out a few peaks of sun, but I don't think we see much today. So it's going to be a cloudy, mostly cloudy day. 55 degrees, New Braunfels, 53, Curvo, 57 in Honda. We are seeing some sun in Rock Springs right now, 52 there. Same story out in Del Rio, 57 for you. Around Bear County, generally mid 50s at this hour, and these temperatures don't budge much. These clouds, especially this time of year, just don't give us uh, the opportunity to uh, warm up all that much. 58 degrees at 2 o'clock, 59, 3 p.m. We're close to 60 this afternoon. There is that small, small chance of a shower. And then as we get into tonight, uh, it seems to stay pretty steady here. 54 degrees at 8, 9 o'clock. Here's what we're watching on water vapor. So you can see the spin right there. That's our next storm system. It would be nice if it came right into South Texas. It does not. It uh, moves east and moves north of us. So that's why our rain chances really aren't that great with this system. Uh, but we see the snow there in Arizona, and it is trying to pull up some moisture. We've also got a little area of low pressure that's developing along the uh, coast. So that's why we do have rain chances here. This is 4 o'clock, doesn't show much. But as we get into tomorrow morning, we will start to see some of those sprinkly showers developing. About a 20% chance on your Saturday morning. It'll be cloudy. And the big question tomorrow will be when do these clouds go away? They probably hold through early afternoon at least. And then maybe, maybe some clearing as we get into the uh, evening hours before we completely clear out going into Sunday. And really, I think by 10 p.m. Saturday, yes, the clouds are out of here. And then uh, Sunday is going to be a really, really nice day. We'll get some dry air back in here and uh, temperatures will be around 68 degrees. 61 though tomorrow, a little cooler with that 20% chance of showers and clouds for much of the day. 40 Sunday morning and then as we set up to 68, a little breezy too. So this system moves away. Here comes our next system. This one shows a little bit more promise. Digs a little deeper this time. And as it comes into Texas Monday into Tuesday, it does present a pretty good opportunity here for some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms. This is 9 a.m. Tuesday morning. Right now we're going to put in a 40% chance of rain. Most of this moves out by Tuesday afternoon. So here's how it looks in the seven-day forecast. 61 tomorrow, 68 Sunday as we showed you, 69 Monday and sunny. Uh, but clouds moving in late, and there is that 40% uh, chance of rain now in the forecast Monday night into Tuesday morning, turning windy on Tuesday yet again. And we're going to see some chilly mornings Wednesday and Thursday. So fingers crossed, Tuesday morning, we get some good rain out of this. All right, 40%. That's better than what we thought earlier in the week. Better than any rain chance we've seen in a while. All right, thanks, yeah. Justin. 919, 56 degrees. And coming up next, Taco Bell is bringing back chicken wings. We're going to look at how much longer it will stay on the menu. In your morning headlines, the U.S. Postal Service is making things a little difficult for a nonprofit sending stuff to our soldiers overseas. Plus, Taco Bell is bringing back what they call a fan favorite. Let's go to RJ Marcus for your morning headlines. Yeah, good morning, guys. Yeah, fan favorite there in air quotes because I'm not sure who's asking for this, but Taco Bell's bringing it back anyway. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, interesting story there in the world of food. But uh, first of all, guys, I want to start with a very unfortunate, uh, tragic accident at a Denny's restaurant in Kentucky. So there, a woman died there and two others were injured after the restaurant's sign fell on a vehicle. And you can see this video right there behind me. So witnesses said that the wind blew the Denny's sign from its post, causing it to crush.
crush a car in the parking lot at that restaurant. This was a 72 year old woman and she was in the car. She was taken to a Louisville hospital in critical condition where she was later pronounced dead. Two other people were in the car. Also, they were injured and taken to the hospital. So an investigation into what exactly happened there. Again, this sign crushing this car there at Denny's is ongoing. All right, some consumer news this morning. If you have T-Mobile, like I do, then this is pretty alarming here. The company says that a hacker stole the personal information of 37 million customers. T-Mobile revealed the breach in a regulatory filing on Thursday, but it happened all the way back in November. T-Mobile says that the hacker took data that included users' names, addresses, emails, phone numbers, and dates of birth. But they say that there were no social security numbers, credit card information, pins, or passwords that were exposed. T-Mobile says that it is in the process of notifying affected customers. Okay, so we're seeing it all over the place, higher prices, inflation, and that's now hitting a Massachusetts nonprofit organization that sends care packages to U.S. Armed Forces overseas. So for 20 years, Wendy Rocca and her dedicated squad of volunteers at Operation American Soldier, Soldier have sent care packages to these troops overseas. Now, these are things like comfort items ranging from peanut butter to toilet paper, along with a personal note to thank them for their service. But the nonprofit says that a change by the Postal Service is threatening all of this. Next week, the flat rate box that many nonprofits have used for years to send military care packages is going away. This is what the post office is scrapping. The regional rate B box, which costs these volunteers just over 14 bucks to ship overseas. Their only other flat rate option would be this slightly larger box, which will cost them more than 21 bucks. Now, they're going to add six bucks a box because they're taking this away? It doesn't work. Yeah, pretty big, uh, significant change there in price. So the group packs their own boxes. They'll be charged by weight and size, which is more expensive and more difficult to ship. They understand the Postal Service is struggling financially, but hope that it will rethink their newly announced price hike for flat rate shipping. Don't know if that's going to happen, but hopefully they can still continue to send those packages to those troops overseas. All right, guys, so moving on to the world of food here. And again, not sure who asked for this, but Taco Bell is bringing back its crispy chicken wings, maybe just in time for the Super Bowl, I'm guessing. The bone and wings coated in a queso seasoning will be on the menu for a limited time only. So the eight wings here will cost you about $7. Now you need to check the Taco Bell app to find out which locations actually sell these wings and check this out too probably again for Super Bowl season here they're also selling the ultimate game day box loaded with a Mexican pizza four crunchy tacos and eight wings all for 22 bucks the limited time offer starts next Thursday and runs through February 9th yeah we didn't know that was a thing either Mexican no. pizza yes didn't yes. know about the yes. wings I didn't either Cr crunchy yeah. tacos yeah did not know that Taco Bell had wings but Taco Bell is one of those places where I think they just experiment with stuff just throw it out there yeah. Like the nacho quesadilla and all that type yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Kind of stuff. But this one's really different. Yeah. yeah. Wings, I don't know. Taco Bell wings, not really too appealing to me. But. Well, the video looked nice. There we go. <laughs> so, no, there we go. Marketing, yeah, you Stephanie. You have to check it out. Yeah. Marketing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. RJ, thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. 927, 56 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a huge playoff showdown for the Cowboys as they head to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. RJ Marcus will be back to get you ready for the rivalry matchup. And we have that sweepstakes going for our KSAT insiders. A few lucky winners will get to ride with David and Ursula on a carriage. For the Western Heritage Parade, we'll hear from David, who again is out live in Blanco with how you can enter. That's coming up right here on GMSA at 9. Welcome back. In case you missed it earlier this morning on GMSA, DPS troopers dispatched a chopper to help find a driver who decided to run from Bear County deputies overnight. Happened just before 2 this morning near Panda Drive in Marlena on the northwest side near Loop 410. Bear County Sheriff's Office says a deputy tried to pull the speeding driver over, but that driver and a Dodge Charger took off. The deputy did not chase him. The driver later crashed into a parked vehicle, got out and tried to run. The DPS helicopter found him a few blocks away and he was detained. BCSO says the man appeared to be intoxicated. And San Antonio firefighters responded to a two alarm fire at an industrial building on the city's far northeast side early this morning. The fire was called in just before 5.30 a.m. in the 13,100 block of Lookout Way. That is not far from Judson Road. Now earlier, firefighters could be seen cutting a hole into the side of the building trying to get inside. 
According to the San Antonio Fire Department website, as many as 32 units answered that call. At last check, that number was down to eight. Also among our top stories this morning, a man found dead in an apartment near Converse overnight. Happened around 1130 last night at an apartment complex in the 4600 block of East Loop 1604 near I-10 east of town. Police say family members found the man shot to death on his couch. A gun was not located, so right now police are investigating the case as a homicide. In some national headlines, another classroom controversy in Florida, this time over an African-American studies class being proposed. The college-level course is already being taught around the country, but as Andrea Fujii explains, the governor of Florida is trying to put a stop to it. This morning, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' administration is blocking an AP African American Studies high school course, saying the class would violate state law. I don't know what the basis of this thought is. It's downright painful to people of color. This new college-level pilot course takes students from pre-colonial Africa to modern protest movements. In a letter to the college board, which oversees AP courses, Florida's Department of Education rejected approval of the course, saying it's inexplicably contrary to Florida law and significantly lacks educational value, adding that if the course comes into compliance and incorporates historically accurate content, Florida Department of Education will always be willing to reopen the discussion. The rejection follows the governor's effort to limit discussion of race in school. Last year, DeSantis signed the Stop Woke Act, restricting race-based conversation and analysis in the business and education sectors. He's made other headline-making education moves as well. We say gay! We say gay! Signing the bill critics refer to as the Don't Say Gay Law. We will make sure that parents can send their kids to school to get an education, not in indoctrination. But one state senator is raising questions about the AP course rejection, tweeting this list of all the other ethnic AP courses he says are offered in Florida and saying it's crazy how AP African American studies made the chopping block in Florida. This course is already being taught in more than 60 schools across the country, with many more planned next school year. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. And let's look out there with a live cam, 56 degrees. It hasn't really warmed up a whole lot from this morning. No, and it's, it's not really going to warm up that much at all today. In fact, we'll only be up around 60. We're in the mid-50s right now. May only gain 5 degrees or so by the afternoon. I want to show you a picture here on our case I Connect. I have no contacts with this other than to say this uh, says hovering over the fluff. Uh, there is a skydiver, it looks like, there over the clouds, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know... Uh, when or how or why, but it's awesome. We appreciate the picture, as always, on our uh, KSAC Connect. So that's Make a cool sure you shot. Hear about the picture taker, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. Picture that was taker was one. also a skydiver or in the plane that dropped the skydiver off. I exactly. Know. Great picture, though. Uh, at any rate, we love it. Thank you so much for sending that in. And as uh, we look at the live radar, uh, we can see some showers there uh, east of San Antonio. Most of these are really light at the moment. And we have seen a few very light returns around San Antonio, but these aren't reaching the ground. So while it looks like there are some showers there, probably uh, just cloudy. If there is anything, it's nothing more than a, a sprinkle or two. We will have the opportunity, though, for a few showers uh, tonight into tomorrow morning. 56 degrees at the airport, 53 Kerrville, 57 in Uvalde right now. Mid 50s around uh, Bear County, as we said, and the forecast takes us up to about 58 at one o'clock and 60 for high cloudy all day long. East Julie winds five to 10 miles per hour. What about the weekend, though? There is one day that looks better than the other. We'll take a look at that here in just a few minutes. Justin, thank you. Traffic alert right now. We do have a collision to show you right now. This is I-10 West at Probant. We've got one, two, three lanes currently blocked. SAPD is out there on the scene. Looks like they may be there just a little while because uh, safety cones and one of those tech stop trucks with the flashing arrow is up for now. We'll keep an eye on it for you. And we are gearing up for the Western Heritage Parade, and there's an exciting opportunity for our KSET insiders. So if you are an insider, you have a chance to ride in the insider carriage with David Sears and Ursula Perry. David Sears live out in Blanco at the Buggy Barn to tell us more. David, looks like you're still having a good time out there. You guys are actually rolling now, aren't you? 
we are rolling, and this is what it's going to be like for all those KSAT insiders, the five who get the uh, opportunity to get in this carriage or wagon, whichever one you want. Wait, is this a carriage or a wagon? Hitch wagon. It's a hitch wagon. There we go. We're going to get the name official. This is Amanda. She's driving. This is Dennis. He's the owner of Buggy Board. And there's Pickle Pass. Pick. Pickle Pass. Thank you. It's cold out here. So we're just riding down, down the town, down the streets of the town. Um, if you want to ride with us during that parade, the Heritage Parade, on the 4th of February, you go to our website. If you're a KSAT insider, you uh, register. If you're not a KSAT insider, you become one. And we've got a QR code. Everybody's got a QR code. Do we? y'all have QR code? I don't they know don't have, See, I don't have a QR code. Everybody's got a QR code but us. we got to get a QR code because that seems to be the thing. So you get a QR code right there. It gives you all the information. And you, too, could be sitting right here and be a part of the uh, big heritage parade downtown. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a great morning. Ursula will be in here with us, and we'll, we'll enjoy it. By the way, I just wanted to let you guys know that we are in, what, what's the name of your town right here? Pinemore. Pinemore. This is not Blanco. It's Pinemore. This is an authentic western town, and this family has been in Blanco for now seven generations. Her, her kids are the seventh generation members of Blanco County. So this is like history right here in Pinemore. So, or just north of Blanco. But this, we're, it, the excitement is just, I can't wait. Look, you do great. Thank you. This is like one of the smoothest rides I've had in a long time. <laughs> so you guys have them sign up? Sorry. First time driving a team. She's do what? This is her first time driving a team. Is it really your? <laughs> <laughs> is your? Are you serious? <laughs> well, you're doing a great job. <laughs> She's doing singles. She's We're doing blast. singles and stuff. I don't know what you guys are doing for the rest of the day, but this is too much fun. See y'all. Have fun. All right, yeah. dude. Yeah. Hang on. Yes, you All have right. fun. <laughs> Wagon, not a carriage. Got it. All yes. right, noted. Thank you, David. Right now, we're at 938, 56 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And up next, Kawhi Leonard and the LA Clippers are coming to the AT&T Center for a showdown against the Spurs. Why Kellen Johnson's recent play could help the Silver and Black pull off an upset. Let's go. It is game night. The San Antonio Spurs are getting ready for the L.A. Clippers who are in town for the game later tonight at the at and Center. So Kawhi Leonard is not on the injury report today, so he'll likely play against his old team after he was held out in a loss to the Jazz earlier this week for the Clippers. Keldon Johnson, though, current Spur, is coming off a career-high 36 points when the Spurs snapped their five-game losing streak against Brooklyn earlier this week. Since five of his six 30-point games have come when De De when Devin Vassell has been out. We asked Calvin, does he need to pick up the slack when Devin is down? Not really. I feel like I just I just kind of do what my team need me to do, take what the defense is giving me. You know, um, you know, I, I think uh, for me and Devin, it'll be a lot of games in the future where we both have 30 or Dev had 30. But I, I don't really think there's no correlation. I feel like, um, you know, he, he can do it all. So just having him out there is definitely good. We can't wait to have him back. All right, we still do miss Devin Vassell, so tip-off tonight between the Spurs and Clippers set for 7 p.m. at the AT&T Center. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, it's Cowboys hype week. How about them Cowboys? For the second straight day, safety J. Ron Curse was limited in practice after he injured his knee in the third quarter of Dallas's win over Tampa Bay. Another big injury here. Defensive end Demarcus Lawrence also dealing with a bit of a foot injury. So there's been a lot of talk about the Cowboys, how they were shortchanged to prepare for the Niners since they played on Monday night. San Francisco is getting two extra days of preparation when you consider the fact that they played Saturday afternoon against Seattle and are also also playing at home, but the Cowboys, get this, have actually done all right on short rest. They're 2-0 in games where they've had only five days to prepare, and Mike McCarthy is 5-1 in his last six outings that included a short week. We've played in all the different combinations of, you know, six-day week, seven-day you know, seven week, eight-day week. So we, we, you know, this is nothing new for us. So we, we don't, we, we, we haven't had a schedule or won't have a schedule that we don't have experience in because you know so much of your preparation is about the flow and the specifics of you know get, getting things perfect and because you know perfect preparation is is attainable, and um, and that's that's just you know that's our approach weekly. 
All right, cannot wait for this game here. Kickoff Sunday in Santa Clara will be at 530, but case at 12 will start live coverage from California starting today at 5 o'clock. Larry Ramirez and photojournalist Billy Caldera is there covering this big matchup for us. All right, back here at home and actually in Arlington, the San Antonio Brahmas are continuing their training camp, getting ready for their first season in the XFL, which is set to kick off in less than a month right here in the Alamo City. The Brahmas will start their season on Sunday, February 19th at 2 p.m against the St. Louis Battlehawks. There we go, Brahma's Battlehawks matchup here in the Dome. That will be live right now, right here on KSAT 12. I belong to the San Antonio Brahma's <laughs> XFL fan page. Uh -huh. Just followed it the Over other day. Over 4,000 members, and we haven't played it down yet. And there's a lot of smack talk uh, against St. Louis right now. Yeah, yes. first game. yeah yes. a lot of smack uh -huh. talk, a lot of excitement too. Mm -hmm. These yeah. fans are already planning tailgates, planning a lot of different things as they get ready for this XFL season. Sure, yeah. I, I call it a win-win. We get a, another sport, uh, and of course, uh, NFL's always keeping tabs yeah. on things, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Maybe be celebrating a Cowboys Super Bowl win and then start the Brahma season. Oh, okay, that would be that. very nice. <laughs> <Good question. laughs> I like that. Good move. Do they always practice in Arlington? Is that where they're going to practice? I think that's where they're going to be practicing yeah. and then traveling here for the home games. Oh, that's my that's understanding. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it'll be good times. Yeah. Cowboys Niners cannot wait for that matchup. Okay. You think Ooh. Cowboys have got this? I think the Cowboys are going to pull this out. Yes. Okay. I do. Yeah. That's just maybe thinking of my heart a little bit there. Yeah. It's okay. I like that's that. Okay. I'm with you. I think I think the whole rest thing is overblown. I, I think that the shorter right? time period, they have less time to think about it. 49ers mm -hmm. got to sit on it for there a while. There you go. Something to be said for that as well. We I feel good about it. Yep. Yeah. We, we hope. Think we we hope. Need, yeah, the kicker too. Brad Maher, don't be thinking about stuff. Just go out there. <laughs> just, <laughs> just go. Like, he's like, <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Aww. Thanks, RJ. Yeah, Thanks, thank you. you. Okay, let's uh, jump into the forecast, guys. We've got uh, some shower activity out there on the radar. Not much. It's all pretty light. Uh, but we're going to see this move generally east and northeast of San Antonio. We had a few light returns around uh, Bear County earlier. These just aren't amounting to much. Uh, if if there's anything there, it's uh, a sprinkle and they've already gone away. So I, we're not really expecting much in the way of rain today. It's mostly going to be cloud cover. And boy, there's a lot of it. You look at the satellite picture here. Uh, we've got low clouds that have spread generally over the area, and then you've got high clouds over top of that. So that doesn't really give us the opportunity to see a lot of sun today. Not saying that we won't, but if we do, it'll be brief. Uh, there is some sun this morning, Del Rio up to Rock Springs, but those are about the only places seeing sun at this point. You can see the cloud cover that is spread over South Texas. Right now, there's a scene at the airport. Uh, 56 degrees, 57 Stinson, 57 Kelly, 55 at a Randolph. East Julie winds anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. 57 in Valley, 59 Pleasanton, 55 Gonzales, 55 in the Braunfels, mid 50s here around San Antonio. And as I said, it just uh, it's going to be hard for us to warm up much from where we are this time of year with that kind of cloud cover. But I do think we make it up to around 60 or so for a high. Probably stays in the mid to upper 50s in the hill country, and then you'll find some low 60s south of San Antonio. Tonight, clouds are still there, so we don't really see a change much. We're down to about 50 or so, but it's by this time tomorrow that we could start to see a few showers, and here's why. We've got a storm system out west. You can see the spin right there in parts of Arizona. A lot of snow there, but it's helping to bring some moisture up uh, into Texas, and we can see that in the form of clouds and those very light showers that we uh, looked at earlier. And here's what the forecast looks like. This is just one of our computer models. It's one of the drier ones. We have some models that are showing maybe a little bit more rain tomorrow morning. Either way, I think what we see is going to be very light. Uh, but there could be some damp areas if you're getting out and about early on your Saturday. We'll get a little area of low pressure developing along the coast as well. So that throws some moisture in our direction through about midday. 20% chance through midday. Uh, and then I think rain chances really do start to taper off. The next big question will be when does this clearing line come through? And this is always a little bit tricky, but I think late afternoon and by the evening hours, things start to clear out and we get some sun. Uh, as we get into Sunday, Sunday should be a beautiful day with clear skies. It'll be a little bit windy, but other than that, it'll be really, really nice. So here's the weekend forecast. 61 tomorrow, 20% chance of showers earlier. Otherwise, lots of clouds until late in the day. And then 68 and sunny on Sunday. Gusty winds could see some gusts up around 30 miles per hour or so. Uh, here's the future cast as we look at this, the upper level wind. So this is the system that brings us some rain this weekend. Here comes another one. This one does dig just a little bit further south than the last one and has a little more energy with it. So by 
Monday, we're starting to see some rain and snow across parts of New Mexico. We'll start to see some clouds perhaps increasing here. And then by Monday night, we've got a chance for some showers and storms. And especially Tuesday morning, that's probably the best opportunity. This is a little overdone. It's not going to be this widespread, but you get the general idea about a 40% chance of rain and that shifts out by Tuesday afternoon. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 61, as we said, Saturday, 68 Sunday, 69 Monday, sun early and then some clouds late. There's that 40% chance of a shower or storm Monday night, Tuesday morning, then turning windy and cooler. We'll see some chilly mornings Wednesday and Thursday, uh, but I'm hoping that uh, Tuesday morning, we do actually get some pretty good rain. Okay, Justin, thank you. 950, 56 degrees. Here's what's coming up next on GMSA at 9. Coming up, we're going backstage for a new production of Rent that's bringing a little New York talent to San Antonio. Welcome back. It's 953. The classic Broadway musical Rent is now showing at the Carlos Alvarez studio in the Tobin Center. Cast includes actors from San Antonio and from New York as KSAT producer Priscilla Caraman went behind the scenes and takes a look. Tony award-winning Broadway musical Rent is coming to the Tobin for this week only. Rent is a show about the AIDS epidemic in the early 90s, the housing crisis and LGBTQ plus matters, but at its core it's a show about human connection and friendship and equality and humanity and I think Coming out of a pandemic, it's so important for people to be reminded about how special human connection can be. I'm so happy that San Antonio Broadway Theater is bringing this to San Antonio, especially in the way that they're integrating New York actors into the San Antonio theater community. For the audience, like, yes, they may come into this knowing that there are New York actors in the show, and that's really cool, but they're going to watch the show and they're not going to know the difference between the people that are from New York and the people that are from San Antonio. And I think that it's such an interesting and unique thing. And for a theater company to be mixing New York actors and local actors together and showing the San Antonio community that it's like all of these people coming together just make this really awesome show and they're going to leave not you know, pointing out one particular actor, one particular singer, they're gonna leave going, wow, that was an amazing show. For more information on the San Antonio Broadway Theater or to purchase tickets, head to KSAT.com. Priscilla Caraman, KSAT 12 News. We have good news. Since we last showed you the accident, I-10 a Pro Band, it just cleared the last vehicle, just pulled away in the last minute or so. Yes, a lot better than earlier. And you look outside, it looks like it may rain. We're not going to see much today other than really just some clouds. There is a chance for some light showers as we get into tonight, early tomorrow. We're not going to get a lot of rain, though. 61 degrees on Saturday, some clearing late in the day, but a lot more sun on Sunday. Some gusty winds. We'll get another chance of rain Monday night into Tuesday. Yeah, and that chance overnight Monday to Tuesday looks pretty significant. It's looking better and better. It's mm -hmm. uh, encouraging to see at least uh, a chance for some showers, maybe even a thunderstorm, rumble of thunder. It's been a while since we've talked about thunderstorms, but there yeah. is an opportunity there. Any, any sort of rain we could get at this point would be amazing. All right, at this point, much needed, but at least the weekend looks good. The weekend looks good, especially Sunday looks good. All right, yeah. can't wait. Fantastic. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Have a good weekend.